In the previous video, we talked about double triggering in pressure control mode of ventilation. In this one, we're going to be talking about double triggering in volume control mode of ventilation. This one is with pressure regulation, ABV, CMV mode. The machine will determine the pressure based on a feedback mechanism from the previous breath. In this breath here, which is time triggered, you don't see any negative deflection. This is the pressure that was utilized by the machine. This is the inspiratory flow. It went up to around 100 liters per minute before it starts to decelerate. As a result of this flow, the volume goes up. It looks like it reached 550 or 570. You don't see the peak uh, of it, but it is estimated. If you extrapolate this uh, curve here, you will see it is around 550 or 570. Expiration starts here, the pressure is released, but you can see that the patient continued to drop this pressure below the, uh, this line, which is probably minus 13 centimeter. This pressure is dropped down to minus 16 or minus 17 centimeter of water. The drop of this pressure was enough to trigger the ventilator again, and this is the second breath. You can see that there is no negative flow, there is no expiratory flow at all. The fact that this volume curve went down to zero here is because of uh, recalibration of the machine. It's not because of exhalation. So what we have inside the lungs right now is around 550 ml. So the next breath starts here. The machine delivered pressure here and the flow is larger than the flow in the first one that resulted into a larger tidal volume. You can see that it looks like the tidal volume went up to this point before it starts to go down with exhalation. So you would estimate that the initial breath, there is about 500 ml into the lungs. The second breath, there is around probably 700 ml into the lungs. So that's total of 1200 ml. Now exhalation starts here. The reason why we have larger tidal volume than this one is probably because of patient's efforts. The patient continued to inhale along with the ventilator. Of course, you can argue that the pressure utilized by the machine is slightly higher than the previous one. Now let's take a look on exhalation. Exhalation starts here, and this is the expiratory flow. The volume starts to go down with expiratory flow. And then at this point here, we exhaled everything that was inhaled in the second breath. However, we still have the air from the first breath here. So that's why the volume curve goes below the zero line. So it goes all the way down. If you extrapolate it, it looks like probably around this point here, which is around 400. Now take a look here. You see persistent flow at the end of expiration, meaning that next breath occurred before complete exhalation. So that means we still have some air inside the lungs. I'm estimating that this is around 100, 120 ml. Now you would confirm this by looking at the next breath here. So if we say that there is still around, let's just say 100 ml inside the lungs, in this breath here, it started by time. The machine utilized the same pressure as the previous breath. This is the flow much lower, and then this is the volume. So we got into the lungs around 200 this time. Of course, the pressure next breath is going to be higher and higher to get to that 570. Now, when exhalation starts here, you will see that the patient exhaled everything from this breath. However, he continues to exhale, and he got rid of that 100 ml that we had in the, in the second breath here that we did not exhale completely. You can see that it goes down to around 100, 120 ml. So that confirms that this was trapped air here is around probably 100, 120 cc's. So this is all what I have uh, about uh, double triggering in volume control mode of ventilation. It is complicated, but if you go breath by breath, you will be able to dissect and be able to answer uh, uh, or to look at every details of that breath. Uh, if you have any comment, please uh, share it in the comment section. Thank you very much.